Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. We made it. This is week eight. Carly, we've gone two whole months of doing this show, and we've made it every single week for eight weeks. On time. I'm. We did it. We did it. We did it. I'm just so freaking like, I am completely stoked about it. I it didn't wasn't think always we pretty, but we did it. No, it wasn't always pretty, but still, it's the fact that we were like, we showed up every day, and yep. that's important. Um, so a couple of I'm, quick announcements before we get into the, the meat of the story today. The first one is... We are 46 days away from Halloween. Uh, this episode is being recorded on September 15th. Um, we, I can't believe Halloween is so close. We're getting there. I know. I'm um, so excited. There are decorations at every store right now. Like mm-hmm. literally even, what you say, Home Depot the other day? You went to Home Depot and literally you walk in and there's Halloween decorations everywhere. I just want to like go look Oh my gosh. They it. had a freaking, um, a skull and bone throne. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need this someday in my life. So maybe that's something, I don't know, in the future. It was just, it was, it's like Game of Thrones, but Halloween style. It was, it was, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Wow. Yeah, that was was cool. Uh, The other announcement that we have is thanks to you guys, we've hit 500 downloads in less than a month, which I think is pretty cool. Just starting out. That's awesome. Right now we're averaging over 60 downloads per episode in the first week. Uh, we're growing extremely fast. We have a bunch of big announcements coming. We're going to save them just a little bit longer. We're going to tease them out, but we have some big announcements coming up. Um, now, the last announcement for today is going to be by Carly. Carly, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking a red wine. You guessed it. It's called The Black Dog. It's a wine um, that is actually, um, I guess, not brewed. What is it? Um, made out in Virginia. Ooh, a local Virginia wine. Yeah. Um, as everyone knows, we're actually from the Loudoun County, D.C. kind of area. Mm-hmm. So we try to hit a bu- as many breweries and we wineries. Like the yeah, around the local stuff. But we'll also drink, honestly, anything that won't kill us. Uh, just, just give us some ideas in the comments or give us an email, something that you think we should drink on the show. We will have some pumpkin videos coming out, too, about how to carve a pumpkin coming out soon. But we'll, we'll save those kind of fun of announcements because we've got some big things in the works un- until, until later. Um, now, today's story is actually a special request from a viewer. Carly? Yeah, we had somebody reach out to us. Um, Sean G81 on YouTube, as well as their partner, Gemma, mentioned that they would really like to have some scary stories about evil fairies and gnomes. So we did a little bit of research, and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. And that kind of gets us into today's tale about evil evil fairies actually um so this story is going to be done a little bit different we're not going to just dive right into the story i thought after doing the research for this and understanding that this is a broad topic of fairies if you just type in fairies oh my gosh so many i pop didn't up. I'm so overwhelmed with I how many know. T- different types of fairies there are yeah and this is why i really like like having people feed back to us and give us these ideas these little rabbit holes go down i mean i spent carl you know a lot of time googling this and i was like even um you know, I should have been doing other things, like maybe some homework and stuff, but it's just the wormhole of going down this when you're like, I just thought fairies is generic, like this one little thing. Right. Um, but I, my research, I think, paid off, and I found a really good story. And this has to do with banshees. Okay. In particular, the banshee of Leah Woods. So before we get started, though, a little bit of, back, of background information. Fairies have morphed and developed over time. In pre-Christian Europe, these beings belong, these beings likely originated as lesser spirits or deities. As Christianity spread, these beings were demoted to either being a race that lived parallel to humans or to demonic ent- entities. Fairies take a wide variety of forms within folklore and literature. Some fairies are beautiful and graceful, while others are hideous to look upon. In modern times, the term fairy is most commonly used to describe beautiful, feminine-looking fairies that tend to have the wings of a butterfly or flying appendages of some sort, while other beings traditionally thought of as types of fairies that don't match this image um, have been around forever, basically as long as Christianity has been in Europe. So in today's tale, we'll be talking about one specific type of fairy, an evil 
or demonic type of fairy. Of course. The Banshee. The Banshee is one of the more intimidating fairies. Historians have traced the first stories of the Banshees to the 8th century, which were based on traditions based on tradition where women sang a sorrowful song to lament someone's death. These were known these women were known as keeners. And since they accepted alcohol as payment, mm -hmm. they were said to be sinners and punished by being doomed to become banshees. I'm pause. But I'm doing the research. <laughs> I loved how and this is this is this is let's, let's assuming this information, let's say Great Britain, the Puritans, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, alcohol is involved. They're like, nope, damn you. Damn you. It's damn. a form of uh, payment. Yeah. Like, like pay up. I'll jump on that train. I'll be a banshee. But seriously, like like the idea that you're gonna you're gonna say to someone, I'm gonna doom you to hell because you you drank alcohol, or is it because you took alcohol as payment? That's the interesting part. Hmm. Christians. They sorry. And I just lost about 20% probably of our whole demographic by saying that. And since they accepted alcohol as payment, they were said to be sinners and punished by being doomed to become banshees. According to the mythology of the banshee, if she is spotted, she will vanish into a cloud of mist. And this action creates a noise similar to that of a bird flapping its wings. Also, legends say that banshees don't cause death. They only serve as a warning of it. But historians can't be certain of that information. Banshees can come in several different forms. A beautiful woman wearing a shroud over her head. A pale woman in a white dress with long red hair. A woman with a long silver dress and silver hair. A headless woman carrying a bowl of blood that is naked from the waist up. I'm assuming what they mean is the woman is naked from the waist up carrying a bowl of blood. An old, also, an old woman with a fright, frightening red eyes, a green dress, and long white hair. And finally, an old woman with a veal covering her face, dressed all in black with long gray hair. This also takes us now to the location of our story, which is the, in England, the Clifton Suspension Bridge and Leo Woods. Lee. Lee Woods. Lee Woods. I apologize to all Britons. Lee Woods is two square kilometer, a uh, two square kilometer a area of woodland on the southwest side of Avalon Gorge, close to the Clifton Suspension Bridge, within North Somerset, opposite the north the, the English city of Bristol, and north of the Ashton Court Estate. Sadly, the bridge in this area has garnered a reputation as a hotspot for suicide. Many poor souls have chosen this location to end their lives. Because of this, there are signs up around the bridge and around the park urging those in distress to call for help. People traveling in this area have many times seen what looked like an individual trying to jump to their death but then vanishing. Hmm. Or people just walking into the woods and disappearing never to be seen again. And that leads us into today's story. Time now for the tale of the Banshee of Leah Woods. My name is Seth. I am 25 now. And back in May of 2020, I had an experience that still gives me chills to this day. Thanks to COVID, I found myself going out a lot more on, the, on my mountain bike. And I wanted to go for a ride on a new trail. After some research into a few different areas, Leah Wood s popped out at me for some reason. So I decided to give it a shot. On arriving in the area, it looked very peaceful. For a woodland area in England, let alone Bristol, it was amazing. As I approached the entrance to the park, I remember seeing a sign with a suicide hotline under suicide hotline number underneath of it. Sadly, many people come to this area to end their lives. My stomach just felt weird for a minute, but I brushed it off and headed just to, to start my mountain biking adventures. The place had different colors at the beginning of each trail, signifying how challenging it was. So I decided to go down the colored one that was considered like medium Finding it 
as I went down it and finished it up, I found it easy and I decided to go down the harder trail. This one was signified by a red sign. As time passed, I began having these, this weird sort of feeling, like something was off. I brushed it off and I continued down the trail, definitely realizing maybe this trail was a little bit harder than, than I bargained for. As I continued down it, looking around, I, I felt like I was being swallowed by the woodland. Then my mind just snapped, damn, this trail is long. Wait, how long have I been here for? Finally, I came to a split in the trail. I could go left in the rough direction, uh, uh, on the rough direction, but you know, it looked like it was a little bit shorter and I could get back a little bit faster, or I could go right that's deeper into the woods, but maybe it could cut down on my time. Me being me, I decided to go deeper into the woods because I had enough of the rocky terrain. I came to a weird little little trail that just had this dodgy sign that had all this gibberish written on it. It was broken and dilapidated. My gut was screaming for me to turn back. Dude, just go take the left, finish this trail out. You can do it, have some balls. But I ignored it and went down the path thinking that, hey, this thing is smooth. It might, it might be going deeper in the woods, but I can make faster time. I came to the point where the trail paralleled the river and I was wrong. This part of the trail became just as hard. I hit a ragged rock that punctured my front tire mm -mm. and almost sent me right over my hand handlebars. Ah, shit. This is going to be a terrible walk back, I said to myself, kicking myself for this stupid decision. As I went and I turned back, as I turned to make my way back, I got this eerie feeling that I was being watched from all angles. Huh. That's funny. I don't, what happened to all the birds? I don't hear any of the birds anymore. Nah, that's that. You know what? I'm all in my head. I'm all in my head. I should just get back. You know what? I probably should call my friends, let them know that I'm going to be a little bit late. This is weird. Why don't I have cell signal? I brushed it off and decided just to, just to start hiking back and not think about it too much more. As I turned to make my way back again, this eerie feeling again just crept into me like something was off. I was being watched. Upon getting back to the spot where I orig originally went off the trail, I felt this weird loss of time. Hmm. How long have I been walking for? Ah, oh, dang, the daylight starting to leave. I, I gotta get back. I felt as if the whole path had stretched by half a mile, as if the woodland was moving. I began walking up the path, feeling the same eerie sensation of being watched as I did before. With light fading, I got about halfway back up the path when I heard, what, what is that? Is that crying? Yes, that's what it is. I, I heard a woman crying. It's gotta be for over there, from behind that tree. The tree's probably about 60 yards off the trail next to the river. My heart sank. Knowing people go to this area to commit suicide, I'm, I didn't, I, for a split second, I didn't know what to do. Should I leave? Should I go check on her? What if she's about to do something? I couldn't live with myself without at least checking to see if she was okay. So I went over to see if the person needed any help. When I got to the tree and I looked behind it, the crying stopped and there was no one there. Mm. A sudden shiver went up my spine. Okay, I must be hearing stuff. It's getting late. I must have really hit the handlebar a little bit harder than I thought. I turned around and, and picked up my walking pace. It's like... It's like he has a spell cast on him or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he already thinks that he's been in the woods for a really long time. He can't figure out, like, what time it is and how long he's been there. And he's, like, not... He's he's making sound decisions for the most part, but he isn't really grasping, like, what's going on around him. He's second-guessing everything. Yeah, he is. And it's just... 
that eeriness of like knowing people do stuff like this here in this area. Right. And then that whole thing like hits, uh, it's just, and it plays, again, it's playing with your mind. Yeah. I picked up my walking pace a little. And a minute or so later, only a couple meters away from where I heard the crying, it started up again. But it grew a little bit louder. I turned around and I looked down the path about 100 yards. And there I saw it. it looked like an old woman with a veil over her head, a green dress, and long white hair. I stood there like in a trance, staring at her. Then she removed her veil, showing green, I'm sorry, showing frightening red eyes. I stood there frozen. When all of a sudden, she let out this blood curdling scream. It felt like my head was going to explode. Without thinking, I threw down my bike and ran. The cry seemed to be getting louder as if she was getting closer to me. I picked up my pace and as I did, the crying became more and more hysterical. At this point, I was running as fast as I could, yet I felt like the crying woman was, was getting closer to me. I could feel her presence. In this, my stomach went into knots. This over-terror exuded my body. After what felt like an hour, but in reality was probably only five or ten minutes, I made it to the car park. I stopped to catch my breath and noticed that the crying had stopped. And then I could hear it starting again. But this time, it was moving away going back down towards, or back down the trail towards it came. I was as white as a sheet of paper. Quickly, I regained my composure. I jumped in the car and drove as fast as I could away from, from Lee Woods. Two days later, I was at the pub with some buddies recounting the story. We all had a good laugh at my expense. When the news playing over the TV, playing over the bar caught my eye. Apparently, there was a body of a woman that was found in the area not a day after I was there. And this was the tale of the Banshee of Lee Woods. Mm. You know, the only thing that I find comfort in is knowing that the Banshee doesn't typically cause harm. So is she, is the banshee, is it the soul of the person that died or is it there to help prevent it? Like, I, I know, I know. interesting concept. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I don't think she's there to prevent it. She's more so there to like, like to announce it. Mm-hmm. But to be be caught in the woods like that, that is that's intense. And I like how I, the one part of it that really got creepy to me, besides the the old screaming woman, was the idea of like you're going down, you like you lose track of time. And it's just it's like the subtle things that freak me out, like mm -hmm. about that, like the animal life stops, like the forest goes quiet, and it feels like you're the only one there all of a sudden. Yeah. And then also the part where it's like you're just going along, and all of a sudden you're like, Wait, where, where am I? Like you knew, but you just like are in this trance, and all of a sudden like you lose your direction. Right. An idea like the force swallowing you up, like you are on sacred ground, or maybe the story isn't hinted at that. Maybe that's exactly when the person took their life. Could be. Because he said like the body was found around the same time he was like a, a day after he was there. So maybe it happened while he, he was, was there. there. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the banshee came. That's when the banshee came. And that's why he felt so weird being there. It was eerie because somebody's life just left. Mm -hmm. Like that. I, ooh, God, that gave me goosebumps there. Because like the idea of like if that if a person's if a person leaves this this world or if a soul leaves this world or this 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 plane of existence, do you feel that? I mean, can you feel that? I'd say ninety nine percent of the time, a person would say, yeah, they feel that. And the fact that to do it in such a, a sad way. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, and the fact is, I didn't know a banshee was that. Like this idea of like when death happens, they appear. I didn't know that about banshees. I had no idea. Before we did our research, I thought a banshee was like a Sasquatch. What? Yeah. But why is Sasquatch? I thought it was the same concept of, as a Sasquatch. Like a big creature that is in the woods. I, oh, oh, okay. I'm just homeschooler 101. 
Um, no, I, I honestly thought like the Banshee was kind of more like the like a Mothman type of deal, like um, a damned angel. But oh. the idea of like in there, but I guess it's the same thing as is, is fairy mythology. Yeah. But I thought it actually it, it 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 was it would kill you, right? But this idea of it being no, it's just it, it is alerting you of somebody dying, mm-hmm. of somebody like that. That's creepier, yeah. I guess for some reason. I don't know why that's creepier to me. Um, the fact that somebody's life is gone and then they're either going to let you know it's about to happen or it just happened. Right. It's and there's of, like nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You just know that the death is coming. It's like a siren. Yeah, ex- exactly. Like a siren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of like Mothman. Like Mothman, it might be a, a banshee actually because in, in Mothman mythology, it's the idea that you always see a Mothman before a natural disaster or something like that. Oh. The big one in West Virginia for, you know, not spoiler because we'll do Mothman eventually, is the fact that there's a big bridge that collapsed and killed a lot of people. Mothman was seen a lot before that. Wow. So it's interesting like how that is probably, was that taken from the Banshee mythology of this harbinger to alert of, of, of death? True. But the idea of it also taking place in an area where a lot of people sadly take their own life, that's what's really creepy. Mm-hmm. Because I bet I know that you can feel it. If you knew that you were going into a place like that, like the suicide force in Japan, that's got to feel different. Oh, 100%. It's got to feel really weird. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that that was today's tale. Um, big again, Carly. Thank shout you. out. Thank you, Sean and Gemma, for suggesting we do this research. I learned a lot. I had a I really great did. time learning about different evil fairies and gnomes and um, the banshee, especially. There are a couple more that I definitely want to touch. And on butterflies. Later. Oh yeah, butterflies. I love butterflies. So um, <laughs> hearing, you know, the butterflies are meaning like they, they're either the souls of people um, or bringing good news. Um, that, that was definitely super fun. I think that we should touch on more evil fairies in the future, though. I want to come back. Absolutely, come back to I, it is a rabbit hole. Like I didn't realize there was so much there with the fairies. And, and again, there are so many other cultures with really cool myths and legends and and history that I really want to touch on. And it, there are some things for for the Celtic mythology too that, that we looked at. So I want to again thank you so much for t- for putting us on this trail. Again, everybody, if you'd like us to do a topic or you think you know we're not good at what we're doing, whatever. Please drop us an email at spiritsandghoststories at gmail.com or leave a comment on our YouTube page. Um, or Instagram. Or Instagram. Or Facebook. Or Facebook. Please let us know what we should do next. And until next time, my name is Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. And we'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. See you, everybody.